What's going on guys and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. You know here on this channel I make it my goal to help you guys catch more bass no matter where you live and a big part of my journey here on YouTube is using and operating and of course catching bass out of my Skeeter bass boat. This here is my FXR 21 and I've had a few people over the last few months I think due to the pandemic a lot of people are new boat buyers, new boat operators and so they want to know what are some of my best practices for backing my boat down the ramp. So in today's video I'm going to try to explain in the most simplest possible way that I can some of the things that I do in order to get my boat safely and efficiently down at the ramp and of course into the water to have a good fishing day. So my name's Tyler and let's do it. So the first thing I want to talk about is that when you're trailering your bass boat or watercraft in general down the highway, you have all sorts of safety features on here to keep your boat attached to your trailer because that's the number one thing we want to do. You don't want to see a, a boat sliding off the trailer. And so here in my bass boat, I have two different safety cables up at the front and I have a few features down at the back. And I want to tell you guys a quick story as we walk to the back of why you want to make sure you have everything taken off your boat before you try to launch it. And that may seem like a no brainer, but my first ever high school tournament that I won, I think I was 16 years old, I just got my driver's license. I backed the boat down the ramp, 5.30 in the morning, keep in mind, and I cannot get the boat off the trailer. I'm like, what the heck's going on? A buddy of mine says, Tyler, you dummy, you forgot to take off the main strap up front. And I'm like, oh my gosh, in this stressful situation, I forgot. So I go up there, take the strap off, I say, all right, back me down again. So he backs me down, and my boat still will not come off the trailer. I had forgotten the main straps in the back of the boat. And I'm like, all right, we're finally good to go. So we back the boat into the water, and then my trim will not go down. And I'm just getting frustrated at this point. I'm like, man, now my engine trim is broken. Turns out I forgot to take off the trim block. And so keep in mind, I don't care if it's a tournament morning or just a regular fishing day, a boat ramp situation can be stressful. So take it slow and remember everything that needs to be taken off or in a very important case as the plug, put on the boat. I have seen two situations in my life where in the winter time somebody launched their boat, it is already off the trailer and their boat starts to take on water. They have to dive in the water in the, in the super cold water and put the plug in themselves. Luckily my new Skeeter has a, a plug that's adjustable right by the dash, but a lot of boats out there do not. You have to actually go underneath and adjust the plug. Just remember, as a no brainer as that may seem right now, every single boat owner has forgotten to take off certain things off their boat and just to lessen the stressful experience of a boat ramp, especially when it's it's busy and there's lots of boats, just make sure you pull off to the side and you properly prep your boat before you even attempt to take it down the ramp. So now that I have every important piece you know, of, of safety equipment taken off the back that connects the, the, uh, the, the back of the boat to the trailer, you want to make sure that you don't trim your engine down too far. I've seen this happen before as well. You'll take the stick off and then people will just trim while their engine is all the way down. And you may not think that's going to have any issue, you may think I'll just back down the ramp and I'm ready to go. Problem is a lot of ramps and especially the, the crest of the ramp. Your, your skeg can hit the ground and so you want to make sure that you have the engine I don't, mine's not trimmed up all the way, but I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty high up there. And usually right about there is where I like to have my trim set. I'm probably being a little bit too cautious, but I do not want to end up on one of those, you know, social media pages that they are making fun of somebody who left their skeg down and it just drags on the boat ramp as you go down. That can cause some serious issue to your engine. So a uh, little tip for you guys, just make sure you're having your trim in the proper location. So now that everything is ready to go on the boat, of course, we are not in anybody else's way because we've parked over here in a staging area. One more thing that I want to tell you guys to look out for is I know when you're moving stuff from your truck to your boat or your tow vehicle to your boat to get ready, oftentimes you can leave stuff on the boat deck and sometimes down the ramp is a little bit more windy than it is up in a staging area. So if you leave bags of soft plastics or a jacket, I've seen it countless times, even myself, you back down the ramp and all of a sudden you look back and your jacket's in the water. So just take everything that could potentially blow away or any sort of vibration down the ramp that could bounce out of the boat, water bottles, you know, a, a coffee, a coffee cup with an open mug. Just make sure you have everything secured and or put away. That way you are not having any accidents on the water. Uh, now my tow vehicle for today's episode is this beautiful GMC Denali 2500 diesel piece of work. 
I mean, this thing is beautiful. Thank you to GM for sponsoring this video and a few videos coming up here on the channel. I will have more information on this truck and a more detailed walkthrough coming up on a, uh, a fishing episode coming up soon, but I'm just super grateful they've allowed us to use this beautiful vehicle. And while the technology of this truck can definitely make back and down the ramp quite a bit easier, we're actually not going to use any kind of backup cameras or auxiliary devices to help us back besides our mirrors. That way anybody out there can watch this video and learn. So I say we hop in the truck and get this boat ready to be launched. So we have pulled the truck all the way around and now as you can see from this drone shot above us, we are now fully straight or at least you know close to being fully straight to the exact lane ramp we want to go to. I think this boat ramp is a uh, three or four boat lane, I guess we'll find out as we back down. Um, but the reason why I've chosen this one as I'll talk about here in a second is because it has the dock on my driver's side and I'll explain exactly why it's important here in a second. But before you ever get in this situation, you've got to put in practice. So whether it's at a uh, an empty Walmart parking lot or you are at a an empty boat ramp like we are today or relatively empty, just put in a ton of practice that way you are more familiar with how your truck and your trailer interact with each other. But the, the biggest tip that I have for you guys, the best practice that my dad taught me is that when you are backing down a trailer of any kind, bass boat, yard equipment, whatever, whichever way you want the trailer to move, is the way that you want to turn the bottom of the wheel. So if we're backing down, I'll kind of show a split, split screen here. So now the truck is in reverse, we're ready to back down the ramp. And right now we're, we're nice and centered. But I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the wheel too far to, uh, in terms of when I say turn, I'm talking about the bottom, too far to the left. And we're gonna kind of jackknife the trailer here. And you're gonna be able to see, all right, now we are definitely not centered to the boat ramp. And so we're gonna auto correct, we want the trailer to go right, so we're turning the bottom of the wheel right, and it's going to adjust our trailer in time. And you're gonna see that we're way over that way, and now we're kinda of getting back to center, and so we're gonna slowly turn the wheel back to the left, and you're gonna see the trailer slowly turn that way. It's all about slow turns. You don't wanna do anything fast at the boat ramp. That is definitely not uh, helpful to anyone around you. And so now we've made it to the, the crest of the boat ramp. We are centered to the lane. I'm gonna turn my wheels completely straight, almost completely straight, that is, and let the trailer go straight down the ramp. Like I said, everything you wanna do is, is slow, methodical. I've seen way too many instances of people backing their boats down the ramp at far too fast of a speed and something bad always happens. So like I said, the bottom of the wheel, whatever direction you want it to go, is the direction the trailer is going to go. All right, so now we have made it to you know the lower side of the ramp. And one thing that I do, that I know a lot of other people do not do, especially I see a lot of pro anglers do, and I think it's a bad example, a lot of people take off their front bow strap when they're backing down the ramp. And just for the sake of safety, I have personally seen two boats almost slide off the trailer in icy conditions because they do not leave their bow strap attached. So it's just kind of a habit for me, a safety habit. I always leave this thing attached until I'm in the water or very close to the water like I am here. And like I mentioned earlier on in the video, I love to launch by myself, fish by myself is, is one of my favorite things to do. I find it really relaxing. But unless you know exactly what to do, it is hard to launch your boat by yourself. Having a helper, having a buddy with you, that's what I'm always gonna preach. It is best to have somebody in the truck and somebody in the boat. That way, as soon as the boat's in the water, they can go park the truck. But you're not always gonna have that liberty. And especially in my situation, I fish by myself a ton. And so what I like to do is I like to pick a lane that is on the driver's side, of, or the dock is on the driver's side of the lane. And so I'm on the far, uh, if you're looking at the ramp uh, from the bottom, the far right side here. And this, this dock for some reason is in the middle of this lane here. So I'm actually gonna kind of make my trailer a little bit crooked as we back down this ramp kind of into the median. And what I do is I back the trailer at an angle so that when the boat slides off the trailer, it slides off right next to the dock. I can quickly put the, the truck in park. I can run down and get the boat and the boat doesn't fly away from me. I don't have to, you know, shimmy around the truck to get on the boat. Now, of course, you're not gonna have a dock perfectly situated at every boat ramp. I know a lot of boat ramps out there don't have a, a, a courtesy dock like this, but this one does. So let me show you that process. And guess what I did, folks? I didn't put the plug in, I just realized. So always remember, put the plug in so you don't end up cold and wet and sad. So as y'all can see, I'm going to angle the trailer a little bit. Usually, like I said, the dock is not in the middle of the next lane, but I'm gonna angle it just like this so that when the boat slides off the trailer, it is going to slide right next to the dock 
boom, just like that. Put it in truck park, hop on out, and go get my boat. And that right there, boys and girls, is how you launch your bass boat. Now, as I stand here in my vessel, I've realized I've conquered the boat ramp. What I thought was once difficult and challenging and scary, no longer scary anymore. We are on the lake, and my name is Tyler, and we'll see you next time on TRF.